Section twenty point five: the radial probability distribution function. So first, let's look at the volume element in the polar spherical coordinates. D tau equals r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. Therefore, the probability of finding an electron between r and r plus dr is not simply the radial function squared. It's this radial wave function squared times the radius squared. So this radius squared comes from here. The volume element. Also, you may imagine the probability of finding an electron between r and r plus dr is actually the probability of finding this electron in a shell. This shell has a thickness of dr. This shell is spherical. This shell has a surface area of four pi r squared. So again, that's why you see this r squared here. We define this function p to be uppercase r squared, the radial wave function squared, times the lowercase r squared, the radius squared, and this p is the radial probability distribution function. So now let's look at this volume experiment. We're going to see why this d tau is r squared times sine theta times dr d theta d phi. So let's review the polar spherical coordinates. X, y, z are the Cartesian coordinates, and then we have r, theta, and phi polar coordinates. This is a vector. The length of this vector is r. The angle between this vector and the z-axis is theta. And now, if we project this vector to the x-y plane, we get this dashed line. The angle between this dashed line and the x-axis is phi. So that's how we define r, theta, and phi. Now let's look at the volume element here. It's a box. We have three different sides. This one is dr. From r, this is r, and this is r plus dr. So the difference is dr. This side is dr. What about this side? Well, this side is actually an arc with a radius of r, and this angle is d theta. So from here to here, this is theta, and then if we go from here to here, this part is d theta. All right. So d theta times r. Give you the length of this arc. Now, finally, this side is r times sine theta times d phi. So this angle is d phi, and this length is r times sine theta. Again, this is r. This is theta. So this is r times sine theta, and over here, this is r times cosine theta. All right, r times cosine theta, r times sine theta. This is r. And this angle is 90 degrees. Okay, this angle is 90 degrees. So now we have three sides: dr, r times d theta, and r times sine theta d phi. The product of these three sides is approximately the volume of this box. So it's r squared times sine theta times d theta d phi dr. If we have a normalized radial function r, we have this integral be equal to one. The physical meaning is very simple: the probability of finding this electron from radius zero to a radius of infinity is gotta be a hundred percent. So that's why the integral of the radial distribution function is one. Now let me give you a few numerical examples. Let's look at the 1s electron first. This is the radial function in the SI units. It looks complicated, but if you know a naught is one atomic unit of length, and then this part is simply one negative r over one atomic unit is just r. So this 
is the same wave function in the atomic units. Now we'll prove this is normalized. Let's integrate this radio function squared r squared. So we plug in the wave function here. So 2 times e to the power of negative r squared is 4 times e to the power of negative 2r. All right? And this r squared comes from the volume element, the tau. How do we integrate this? Well, you can use Wolfram alpha. The result is 1. Or you can do this step by step. So you may pause the video here and try to evaluate this integral all by yourself. You can look at my steps. But again, the result is 1. We can also determine the maximum or maxima of a radio distribution function by setting dp over dr to be 0. Again, this p is the radio distribution function whenever you need to find the maximum or minimum of a function. Well, you simply set its first derivative to 0. So we need to uh, plug in the expression of the radio distribution function, which is the wave function squared, the radio wave function squared, times the radius squared over here. And then, by using the product rule, we have this equation or this equation. If you look at this equation, we know the maximum will appear when this r plus the lowercase r times r prime is zero. All right, so this is the radio function. This is the first derivative of the radio function. The lowercase r is the radius. So we can use this equation or simply this equation to determine the position of the maximum or maxima of the radio distribution function. Let's look at the wireless electron. For the wireless electron, the radio function is 2 times e to the power of negative r. So we plug this in here, and we take its first derivative and put it in here. Now we have this equation. We solve this equation. r is one atomic unit of length. So the maximum of the YS electron probability density appears at r equals one atomic unit of length. Now let's look at the 2s atomic orbital. This is a wave function. Plug it in here, and then you get this equation. Solving this equation, we will get two solutions. 0 0.76, 5.24. That's why if you look at the uh, radio distribution function of 2s, there are two maxima. Over here, 0 0.76 atomic unit of length, 5.24 atomic unit of length. This is 1s. The maximum is at 1 atomic unit length. Uh, we can also look at the uh, 2p atomic orbital. We do the same derivation. This is the radio wave function for the 2p orbital. We plug this expression into this equation. And then the result is r equals 4 atomic unit of length. So this is uh, the rad function. It's the 2p orbital. Uh, the maximum is at 4 atomic unit of length. Uh, we can also calculate the expectation value of any physical quantity. For example, let's calculate the expectation value of the radius of the electron. We just use quantum mechanical postulate 4 over here. All right. Uh, we need to evaluate two integrals. On the bottom, it's the integral of psi star times psi. On the top, you have psi star times, well, over here, this is the R operator being applied to psi. Over here, you have the range of the three variables. R is between 0 to infinity. Theta is between 0 and pi. Phi is between 0 and 2 pi. 
for the one s electron, psi is e to the power of negative r. Uh, this is unnormalized, but don't worry about the normalization factor. If you include the normalization factor, you will see that here, here, twice on top, here, here, twice on the bottom, so they cancel. Now let's plug in this e to the power of negative r here, and then replace this d tau with its expression in terms of r, theta, and phi. It's r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. Looks complicated because we have two triple variable integrals. However, each, uh, each triple integral can be expressed as the product of three single integrals. One, two, three. On the bottom, same thing. We have three single variable integrals. And fortunately, the integral of d phi cancels the integral of d phi. The integral of sine theta d theta cancels this integral of sine theta d theta. So we have only two simple integrals. How do we evaluate this two? Well, again, you can use Wolfram alpha. Also, you can use this formula. You just plug in the value of n here. It can be 3 on top. It can be 2 on the bottom. And then we get 1.5 as the expectation value of the radius of the 1s electron in the hydrogen atom. Uh, how did I get this formula? Well, you can also use Wolfram alpha to get this formula, but also you can prove this. Uh, you need to prove the integral of e to the power of negative 1r times r to the power of n is n factorial first. And then you do variable substitution. You set z to be 2r, and then you have e to the power of negative z, and over here it's z over 2 to the power of n, and this is dz over 2, and then you will get this. All right, You can try to prove this yourself, but also feel free to use Wolfram alpha to do this uh, derivation. Now let's look at the 2pz electron. This is the wave function. We plug in the wave function here. Again, we get two uh, triple integrals. We separate these two triple integrals into uh, single variable integrals. And then we'll see uh, this on top, this on the bottom. And on top, this is just 3 factorial. This one is just 2 factorial. The result is simply 3 atomic unit of length. So the expectation value of the radius of the 2pz electron is 3 atomic unit uh, of length. Same for 2px and 2py. So if you do 2px, 2py, you will get the same result. Uh, now let's look at the expectation value of the potential energy. Uh, this is the potential energy operator. So what we need to do is, again, we use positive 4. We just insert this uh, potential energy operator in the middle. Over here, we need to apply this operator to side first before we do the multiplication operation. All right, so maybe I should just uh, emphasize this by... adding to a pair of square brackets here. So again, we need to apply the operator to side first. All right, by doing so, uh, you will get this. Uh, this part is simply d tau. Okay, this, this part is d tau. On the bottom, you have d tau. And again, on the bottom, you have psi star times psi. Uh, in this case, psi star is equal to psi because uh, psi is a real function. And then we need to evaluate these two integrals. Uh, the result is simple. It's negative 1. So the expectation value of the potential energy is negative 1 atomic unit of energy. All right, And uh, 1 atomic unit is 4.36 times 10 to the power of negative 18 joule. OK, let's look at the kinetic energy of the electron. Uh, this is kinetic energy operator, so we just need to apply this operator to psi here. Uh, on, well, fortunately, 
Uh, this Hui function does not depend on theta or phi. So don't worry about these two terms. Uh, the kinetic energy is this. All right. And uh, we just need to do some mathematical derivations. The result is one half. The expectation value of the kinetic energy of the 1s electron is one half atomic unit of energy. So now we know the expectation value of the potential energy is negative 1. The expectation value of the kinetic energy is positive 1 half. We sum this up, we get negative 1 half. Again, negative 1 plus positive 1 half is negative 1 half. That means the expectation value of the total energy is negative 1 half. And that makes sense because we know the 1s electron has an exact total energy, negative 1 half.